This video is made for adult collectors because go see the movie. This was my mo- I just kicked my chair, it's behind me, that hurt. This was my most anticipated figure of the year, old movie leader of Transformers 1 Optimus Prime, hell yeah. And after Primal, I was pumped for this, because the thing had spring-loaded gimmicks and so does this one. This is leader class TF1 Optimus Prime, and please, Takara, Hasbro, please, I beg you, release more than just one of these per year. I want a Megatron to go with my Optimus in this size. I love the way this looks. The colors are nice, but the choice of gray is a bit eh. But the shade of red and blue that they chose are very Optimus Prime shades. I do wish he was a bit wider though, because he's a lot wider in the film in the upper torso. And that's like my only proportional qualm with him. Everything else looks neat. The level of detail is on point, but the details in the gray get lost due to, well, that gray. The backpack, while there is one, it's actually quite clean and it stays together very well. I like to touch a silver on the legs with the vent stripe style detailing and the little whatever these are on the sides of his legs. Head is nice, but I feel it's a bit poofy looking. It's because of the fact that he has the face changing gimmick, but it does look slightly off to me. I still like it, and you can rotate the face to get the unmasked head, though gripping that is such a pain in the ass to get that to rotate. It, it is a little annoying. The smokestacks can rotate forward, and he can do the whole flamethrower thing, but they aren't blast effect compatible, which is a bit meh. I love the Matrix peeking out of the chest. I dig that design. They painted the Matrix in such a bright color to make sure it pops in that chest window, which opens in two parts to reveal said Matrix. He can also hold the Matrix because he has opening hands, so that's epic. He comes with the axe, but that brings my only real complaint in the build of this figure. The shoulders are like 86 Magnus due to the epic spring-loaded gimmick, and they are pinned in like this, so they don't really have the strength to support the arm when holding the axe. The axe is also thick as hell, like that is not breaking. And like I said, there are spring-loaded guns on his shoulders that come out at like 50 miles an hour. It's like Cybertron Cannonball all over again. Granted, the shoulders are fine most of the time, it's just the axe makes them a little bit heavy. Now, one of the things I like the most about this figure is the posing. Oh, and the size, because he's like 86 Grimlock height almost, but posing this thing. I, look, look at how far the leg kicks forward. So as you saw, he's got a lot of joints, a lot of a lot of things he can do, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, a little limited in a couple areas where I wish it was a little bit deeper, but eh, it is what it is. The head is on a ball joint, but like, you can't really get any tilt out of it. He can look up that far, but for some reason, he just wants to spring back down. Little annoying, uh, but you can rotate the head. It can go all the way around. You've got the shoulders. They can do a full 360. They can go in and out. They're, they're weird. They're like trigger happy hot rod style shoulders, but strange. I don't know. I think I'm going to call these like gimmick shoulders because Ultra Magnus has gimmicks in his shoulders. And this guy's got gimmicks in his shoulders. And because of that, they look like this. So yeah, I'm going to call those gimmick shoulders. He's got gimmick shoulders. You got bicep rotation. You have 90 degrees of elbow bend. You have wrist rotation, opening and closing hands. You have waist rotation. Notice how I'm doing this and the arms aren't actually falling out of their position. They're fine as soon as you put the ax in, then they're not fine anymore. Uh, the hips, they're on ratchets and they can go all the way up. That's a very high kick. And they can go back all the way. That's a very nice click. They can go out, you can do the full splits. You have thigh rotation. You have a knee bend that I really wish could go more than 90 degrees. And then the ankles can go down, they can go up, and he has a little bit of ankle tilt. It goes more this way than it does this way, just due to how the sculpting is. Kind of like Evasion Mode Optimus in that regards. Oh, and then the heels can move. So, he is very, very well articulated. I knocked the backpack off. He's very, very well articulated. You can get him into a lot of cool stuff. So yeah, the robot is not without its faults, but I still adore this thing. It's so nice and fun to mess with, and the transformation feels like a very old leader, which I like. Now let's make him whatever that thing is, truck looking weirdo. So to start with, we're going to fold up the heels. 
and then fold the feet in. And then that's all I'm going to do for the lower half. Well, rotate the waist. Then on the back here, what we're going to do is we are going to rotate these down and rotate the arms inward like that. No, like this way. It's, it's the other way. I'm stupid. There we go. Then what we're going to do is take the backpack and bring it out, fold this out, fold open these panels here and rotate this around and then flare this entire assembly here out, open up the backpack section, kind of like Age of Extinction Galvatron a little bit, fold the head in while also pulling this out to allow for it to go all the way in and now you have the chest split up. So after this point, you wanna bring these arms down then you want to bring this up, make sure this hinge is sitting flat here and then line all this up, then fold all this over and it will eat the front section just like that. And it will all just sort of peg into the shoulder sections to lock it all into place. And it kind of just feeds itself into place, which is quite nice. You don't have to fiddle with anything. Then we're going to take this entire assembly here and it is going to peg into the gray section like that's going to hook in. And then these two gray hooks are going to clip around the sides here. Now, they don't like staying in place. They like to come out quite a bit, but they are not really that necessary. So it doesn't really matter if they come out, but they do like getting caught on this red panel here. So you have to make sure that they are around the red panel as much as possible before getting them all snaps into place. That one's not cooperating, but I don't care. Then you bring the arms in, and as you can see, they will snap together. Now we can work on the legs. So the legs, you fold these panels out here. Then you bring these out from inside. This will be his trailer hitch. Then you combine our wars the legs because it's just transformation is just so good. They keep using it. Honestly, I'm, I'm okay with that. It's a great way to collapse the legs without having sliding rails. But you then peg this into here and leave that sitting down like that. Then you bring this one up and it will feed in. Now, when you do this, these are going to overlap. You want the one with the peg at the bottom and they're going to fold in and snap together while this pegs together as well. And then you can peg that into the front then fold the trailer hitch down and clip it together and just make sure everything is nice and lined up properly. The arms like to come undone when you do this, but you can just, you know, peg them back together. Then you fold the smokestacks around. Then you flip out his little wheels and there you have the truck mode. That's a pretty interesting transformation leading to Pax's truck. I, I think this was originally meant to be Pax and they changed it to Prime, but the truck still looks pretty epic. It's so stable apart from those two clips I mentioned, but everything else holds together so well and it's pretty accurate. The feet sticking out and all. I remember there being a shot of the back of the truck in the trailers where you can see the sloped down bits at the back to look like the feet. So it looks like this. The ax just stores like an idiot, but you can peg it in. I do wish it stored like the other Optimus figures they've released because they do that a whole lot better. He also has a trailer hitch, which is either MP44 or MP10 compatible or something, I think. I, I don't know. I don't own those trailers. I just remember seeing an image of one of them working. It also rolls so friggin' well. I love how this thing works and looks. I'm so happy to have it and that it exists and that they are doing this for every film. First Bumblebee, now Rise of the Beasts, and now Transformers 1. But I would love for them to do more than just one, please. I definitely recommend this, but it is a bit expensive. It costs more than Primal did, but it has more involved, like more moving parts and paint and all that sort of stuff. I got this on Bayi, not sponsored, but I'll still link them in the description. But I got this for less than retail on there, so there's always that option. But that's my look at Transformers 1 Brave Commander Leader Class Optimus Prime. That is a mouthful. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.